Everyone stand with us, please. Everyone standing. Grab somebody's hand. Father, we thank you for the word you've put on my heart for tonight. I ask you, Lord, to tailor make every word to be just exactly what we need. Holy Spirit, we need you to teach us. We need you to guide us. We ask the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon this word. And we pray the blood of Jesus over it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody said amen. amen. You may be seated. Take your Bibles and turn to the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 17. There's so many things I want to go over with you tonight and don't have time. But in this 17th chapter, we see how Goliath taunted the children of God, mocked them, made fun of them. And we see then in the 45th verse, David said to the Philistine, that was the giant, that was Goliath the giant. He said, you come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have taunted. And this day the Lord will deliver you into my hands. I will strike you down and I will cut off your head. Now, I don't have time to read now, but if you will read the 2 Samuel chapter 21. Put this in your notes. 2 Samuel 21, beginning in verse 15 all the way through verse 22. This, those verses are the verses about David's mighty men that killed Goliath's four brothers. But going back now to this 1 Samuel 17th chapter, we see that David was just a youth. He was just a boy. I mean, I don't even know if he was shaven yet. He was young, and the bottom line is he had spent so much time out on the hills tending sheep that he had such a relationship with the Lord that he was out there dancing on the hills singing to God, praising God all day long. And he had such a relationship with the Lord that he was truly armed and dangerous. <laughs> Somebody say armed and dangerous. Armed and dangerous. <laughs> if you want to have this kind of strength in the spirit, you have to have a relationship. Somebody say that word relationship. You have to have such a relationship with the Lord that you're so full of God's Word, you're so full of His Spirit, you're talking to Him, you're walking with Him, you're hanging out with Him, you're singing Him love songs. You have such a relationship with Him that you have a spiritual strength on the inside of you. This choir knows that after every choir practice, they have such a spiritual strength in their lives because they just spent two hours ministering to the Lord. And what I'm trying to say to you is this. You will never go further than your relationship with the Lord. And you'll never have a great relationship just by attending church. Now, attending church is good. It helps you along. It encourages you. It builds you up in your faith. But let me tell you, unless you're spending time in your car with God, unless you're spending time at home with the Lord, unless you're singing Him love songs, blowing kisses at Him, unless you're spending time with the Lord, the absolute bottom line is you'll be a good Christian, but you won't have the power that God wants you to have. Sometimes you got to pray in the Holy Ghost. Sometimes you just got to get with God and talk, but commune with Him. Get full of the Spirit. That's why Paul said, don't get drunk with wine, but be ye filled with the Spirit. And what I'm trying to tell you tonight is you got to spend time with Him to get filled with Him. You got to spend time talking to Him to get filled up with His presence. 
somebody ought to say something in here right now. And so David spent so much time with the Lord that he is what I call armed and dangerous. You need to know that you've got a spiritual enemy that strategizes against you. And that's why you need a strong relationship with the Lord. You've got to learn to praise Him when you don't feel like praising Him because you've got an enemy that's planning things against you that unless you're full of the Spirit of God and the Word of God, you will not make it. The Bible says in the book of Genesis that God was going to put enmity between Satan and the seed of the woman. In other words, God said He was going to raise up the Messiah through the seed of a woman, meaning prophesying his own self that, he was, that there was not going to be a man that would fertilize that egg inside the woman. It was going to be God. That's why he called it the seed of the woman. Because Satan wanted to stop God's plans, the Bible says that the sons of Elohim, which was talking about angels, the Bible says that angels took women for their wives to pollute the blood, if you will, to stop the Messiah from coming forth. In other words, fallen angels had sex with women in order to create a race of giants. But you need to know that no matter what weapon the devil forms against you, that devil cannot stop the plan of God. I, I feel like preaching in here tonight. I said that devil cannot stop God's plan in your life. And even when trouble comes into your life, just know if you keep on walking with the Lord, if you keep on talking with the Lord, if you get full of the Spirit of God, that devil cannot stop God's plan. Goliath was one of the giants that the devil had created, if you will, to stop the bloodline of the Messiah from coming forth. It is believed that this giant named Goliath was somewhere between nine and a half and 13 feet tall. Now this boy was about five foot tall, maybe five and a half feet tall. But God wants you to know that no matter how big your giant is that's standing in front of you, No matter how you may be outnumbered in your life, if God be for me, who can be against me? But David had such a strong relationship with the Lord that I'm telling you, giants didn't scare that boy. God wants you to have such a relationship with Him that no matter what you are facing, it doesn't scare you and it doesn't intimidate you. God wants you to be such a praiser and a worshiper that nothing gets inside you that would stop your faith. He wants you to be so in love with Him and such a relationship with Him that you're not intimidated by the pink slip that you got in the mail. He wants you to be so full of the Word that you're armed and dangerous. Tell somebody, I'm armed and dangerous. You know how that giant taunted and made fun of the children of God. But David was so full of faith that he decided he had enough of that giant making fun of the children of God. He made up his mind he wasn't going to take it anymore. Now you need to know that when people come, in your, come against you and get up in your face, you need to know that people are not your fight. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in high places. And so when you get some trouble in your life, just know that your fight is with the devil and not with people. And what I'm trying to say is you have to reach the point that no matter how big your giant is, something inside you needs to rise up and you say, okay, devil, if you want to fight, you got to fight on your hands. If you want a piece of me, Jack, come on and get a piece of me because the fight is on and I'm armed and dangerous. But I'm talking about fighting in the Spirit now. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. 
You know that the devil's laughing at you and he's trying to intimidate you. He's mocking you right now by saying things like, well, if God really loved you, you know you wouldn't be going through what you're going through right now. Am I right about it in here? But at some point, you've got to tell the devil you're not going to take his stuff anymore. At some, time, at some point, you've got to tell him that he's a liar and you are not going to believe his lie. Tell two people the devil is a liar. The devil's a liar. He's been lying to you, baby. He's been telling you a bunch of lies. Don't you fall for his lies. So David went out to face his giant with nothing but a slingshot. I mean, he could have at least had a spear or a sword, a, a slingshot. See, when you know that God's on your side, you can face your giant with nothing but a slingshot in your hand. When you know that you're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus that loves you, you can face every problem with only a little bit of help. Because if God's on your side, you got all the help you need, baby. you got all you need. And the Bible says that David picked up five smooth stones. He picked up five stones because he knew that the giant Goliath had four brothers. But David was ready for a fight. He was ready to get it on. He was armed and dangerous. Tell somebody, I'm armed and dangerous. You need to know that God made you to be a fighter. He made you to be an overcomer. My God made you to be a giant killer. He made you to take authority over every giant in your life. God made you to go into your promised land. My God made you to eat the grapes. He made you to, to be blessed and not cursed. He made you to prosper everywhere you go. He made you to destroy the devil's kingdom with the power of God's word. Tell somebody I'm armed and dangerous. David may have only been 17 years old, but he was armed and dangerous. He was full of the Spirit of God, and he wasn't going to let the devil push him around anymore. And that's the point that God wants you to come to you. Come to, Everybody say, he's armed and dangerous. When you're strong in the Lord and the power of his might, you will be armed and dangerous too. When you're a true worshiper, you'll be armed and dangerous. When you're full of the Spirit of God, you'll be armed and dangerous. When you got the Word of God in your mouth, coming out of your mouth, it's sharper than a two-edged sword. You're armed and dangerous. Samuel went to the house of Jesse to anoint the next king of Israel. And even though all of David's brothers were older and more qualified than he was, God chose David because he was a worshiper and because he would take time with him. There was something different about David than all of his other brothers. He had such a strong relationship with the Lord that he believed that God could do anything but fail. But I guess it really comes back to relationship. And so the question is this, how strong is your relationship today? Because your relationship determines what you can believe God for. David looked at his giant and he said, you come to me with a sword and a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord and this day he will deliver you into my hands. God is showing us something in this scripture. David talked to his giant. And God shows us in the old covenant a type and shadow of, in the flesh of what we are to do in the spirit in the new covenant. David spoke to his physical giant. And it shows us how we are to speak in the spirit against the giants that come against us. God's Word tell us that when, tells us that when we're, when we're full of the Spirit, that we can talk to our giants and tell them to move. And may I say to you that God never told you to get your shovel up and dig that mountain and move it. What did He tell you? Our God, Jesus, told us to speak to our mountain and command, command the mountain to move. God tells us to talk to our giants and tell our giants how big our God is. 
Quit telling God how big your problems are and how big your giants are. Quit complaining about all you're going through and start telling your problems how big your God is. I may be sick today, but my God says by his stripes I am healed. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I may be broke today, but I'm paying my tithes. God's going to open the windows of heaven. He's going to rebuke the devourer in my life. I may be going through some trouble today, but my God is bigger than my problems. Who am I preaching to in here? David became a mighty man of God, and he, became, and he began to gather warriors just like himself around him. The Bible says that bad company corrupts good morals. And so David was a mighty man of war. And he didn't want any wimps around him. And he began to gather men like himself. May I say to you that that's exactly what you do. You gather people around you that are just like you. Come on, somebody. No matter who you are, you gather people around you just like you. Take a look at your friends, and I got a picture of you. The point I'm trying to make is if you hang around people that are warriors for God, then you'll be just like them. But if you hang around losers, you'll be just like the loser. If you can't say amen, at least say ouch. God's trying to show us something here. He's trying to say, you have to talk to your giants. David was armed and dangerous, but now he had to face his four brothers. How many know that just because you defeat depression today doesn't mean you won't have to fight sickness tomorrow? Just because you overcome depression today doesn't mean you won't have to fight marriage problems tomorrow. Because I'm telling you, every problem you face has got a brother waiting around the corner. You better get full of the Word of God. Took a look at somebody and say, armed and dangerous. Armed and dangerous. David and his men not only had to face Goliath, but they had to face the brothers of Goliath. One of his brothers was named Ishibi Binob. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, help us in here. <laughs> his name, his name in the Hebrew means discouragement. How many know that as a child of God, we all face the giant of discouragement from time to time? Can I just work this right here for just a minute? <laughs> It seems as though everything tries to steal our courage or bring discouragement into our lives about the time we decide to sell out to God. About the time we say, all right, I'm through sleeping with my boyfriend. About the time we say, I'm laying this crack pipe down, that's it. greatest discouragement in your life will come your way. I paid my tithes, and now look what's happened. Come on, somebody. Everything will come against you when you make up your mind to sell out to God. And the giant of discouragement wants you to think that God isn't listening. He wants you to think it's a waste of time to gather in church on Wednesday night. He wants you to think that tithing doesn't pay off. He wants you to think it's too hard to serve God and sell out to him. Tell two people the devil is a liar. He is a liar. The devil is a liar. 
And it seems as though the majority of us get discouraged at one time or another. Am I right about it? The majority of us fall into depression at certain times in our lives. Maybe you thought you'd be married by now. Maybe you thought you would have your own business by now. I mean, I can't believe I'm this broke and I'm this age. Oh, I know I'm in the right church here. It seems as though discouragement comes against us all. We all get discouraged, especially when we feel like a failure. But that's when we must learn to speak to that giant of discouragement that would come against every one of us. Oh, I feel like preaching this thing tonight. The Bible says that one of David's men was named Abishai. And Abishai killed the giant of discouragement. The meaning of Abishai is God's grace. It was God's grace that destroyed the discouragement. What I'm trying to say is I'm not strong enough to defeat that discouragement that would come against me. But God's grace is able and sufficient in my life. I'm trying to say that grace is in front of me and grace is beside me, and grace is behind me, and grace is underneath me. Oh, it's not because I deserve it, but I got grace all over me. I'm talking about God's grace. I don't deserve His grace, but thank God for His grace. And see, by His grace, I am the righteousness of God. I already know that I've failed God more times than I can count, but by His grace, I'm in right standing with Him. By His grace, He loves me, and He can't help Himself. Tell somebody He loves you, and He can't help it. Oh, I'm so glad that God loves me, and He's not mad at me. I'm so glad that I don't get what I deserve. And as your pastor, I'm so glad you don't get what you deserve either. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that's greater than all of my sin, and grace that's greater than all of our past. Can I get a good hallelujah right there? Religion tells me that God's going to get me. Religion says if you don't straighten up, boy, God's going to send you to hell. I'm talking about religion now. Religion says that God will put sickness on you to teach you a lesson. I didn't say Jesus would. I said religion will tell you that. But grace steps up to the plate and says, you can't curse what God has blessed. And my grace is sufficient for you. Hallelujah. Shout grace in here. How many of you love the Lord in here tonight? The Bible says, I hath not seen, ear hath, ne- hath not heard, neither have entered into the heart of man all that God has prepared for those that love him. And since you love him, that means, whoa, you don't know what God's going to do for you if you just keep on hanging in there with God, keep on serving God, keep on putting him first in your life. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I love the Lord. And I've got grace on my side. Now give God a praise in here. And the Bible says that there was another giant by the name of Saph. His name means destroyer. You see, the devil's plan is to in some way destroy your life. So you think you just don't love your wife anymore. But the devil's got a plan to destroy you in the divorce. The devil's plan is to get you on drugs. Oh, no big deal. Let's just smoke a little weed. 
no big deal. You can control yourself. You can start when you want. You can quit when you want. Besides that, hey man, let's have fun. You know what I'm talking about. Hey! But what you don't know is the devil's plan is not for you to have fun. His plan is to lie to you and trick you so he can steal everything that you have. Because the devil's plan is to steal your money, steal your finances, steal your marriage, steal your children, steal everything that you have because he is a destroyer. He can't help himself. He is what he is. He's a destroyer. But we can see that one of David's mighty men named Sabikii, <laughs> Sabikii killed this giant. Now, Sabikii means entangling. In other words, if you will sell out to the Lord today, he will tie up all your enemies. He'll entangle all of the enemies that have plans against you. Tell somebody, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And I'm telling you, if you'll praise your God in your midnight hour, he'll set ambushes against all your enemies. He'll confuse them. They won't even know what they're doing. If you'll praise your God in the middle of your mess, he'll hold back the hand of the enemy when you don't even know the enemy is there. Oh, I dare somebody to praise him. I dare somebody to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Now, another of David's mighty men was Elkanon. He killed another brother named Lamai. Lamai means to harass. How many of you know that we all have giants that come against us in our lives, in our walk with the Lord? Every one of us have giants that attack us. And one of the things they try to do when they attack us is to harass us. And this harassment tries to convince you that you're no good. This harassment tries to make you think you committed the unpardonable sin. The devil is a liar. Because Paul said, I'm the chief of all sinners, and if he was, then and he could get saved, then so can you. But let me tell you, the devil tries to make you think through harassment that you are too unworthy for God to help you. You need to know that we're all unworthy. You need to know that none of us deserve God's blessings, but thank God for the blood of Jesus that makes us worthy. And what I'm trying to say is the reason that people on your job are lying about you is because the enemy is trying to harass you. The reason that people are gossiping about you behind your back is because the enemy is trying to harass you. The devil's whole plan is to harass you so you will quit, so you'll get discouraged. His plan is to harass you to the point that you say, oh, what's the use? And you quit coming to church and you put your Bible down. The devil is a liar. I came here to tell you that you can't quit now because you've got the devil on the run, and if you don't quit, he's got nothing left to throw at you because greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in the world. And the Bible says that the giant of harassment was killed by Elhanan, which means the mercy of God. In other words, when I fall down, mercy is there to pick me up. 
when I make a mistake, it's mercy that lifts me up. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I thank God for His mercy that endureth forever. Even if I fail, God, I got two fellas following me that the devil's crowd doesn't know anything about. I got goodness and mercy following me all the days of my life. Shout hallelujah. And the last brother of Goliath to be defeated was the brother that had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot. How many know that he's, he was probably ugly? <laughs> but six, six represents the number of man, and it's, it represents humanism, which tries to make people believe that man can solve all of his problems. It's the humanists that say, I am my own God. It's the humanists that say, if you die, well, you just keep coming back again and again until you get it right. But dear heart, listen to these words. It's appointed unto man once to die, and then you will face the judgment. But preacher, I don't believe that. Well, there are some things that's true whether you believe it or whether you don't. And one day you will slip into eternity and you will know. But let me say it this way. If I'm wrong, I got nothing to lose. And if you're wrong, you got all eternity to lose. God wants us to have so much, so much faith in Him that we stop our complaining. He wants us to have so much faith in Him that we speak to every giant that comes into our lives. Get this message tonight. The message is you've got to be full of the Spirit of God and speak to that giant. I'm talking about speaking to sickness. Jesus talked to withered arms and they grew out. He spoke to blind eyes, and they were healed. He spoke to trees, and they withered up at the roots. He spoke to the wind, and it stopped. The message is that you have to speak to your giant. you got to talk to them. They're trying to harass you. They're trying to intimidate you. They're trying to take all your courage away. you got to speak. Speak. Speak to your giant. you got to speak to depression. you got to speak to loneliness. you got to speak to financial lack. And then you got to start believing that your God is turning everything around. David said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. How many know that the more you talk about something, the more it grows? When you start talking about how big God is, he can do anything but fail. Woo, faith begins to rise up on the inside of you. And when you start talking about your problems and what the white man did and what your boss did, and what the black man did or didn't do. The more you talk about it, whatever it is, it just becomes more magnified and more magnified. There's something about talking negative that literally seals your faith. But when you talk about how big God is, your faith will begin to grow and you'll begin to believe God for anything. See, what David did when the giant came into his life, as he began to talk to the giant. He hadn't done anything yet. He hadn't picked up a sword. He didn't even have his, his slingshot ready to go, but he began to talk to his giant. 
Open your mouth and tell your giant how big your God is. Open your mouth and tell your marriage how big your God is. Tell that sickness how big your God is. Tell your financial problems how big your God is. Oh, we're going somewhere with this now. Listen to me. You got to be armed and dangerous when it comes to dealing with giants. You got to be in church. You got to get full of the Word of God. You got to be tithing so that God will rebuke the devourer for you. Tell somebody, I'm armed and dangerous. David spoke to his giant and he said, the Lord delivered me from the, the paw of the lion and the bear and he's going to deliver me from this giant. I came here to tell you that God will do whatever you say he will do. Think about it. Selah. Think about that. God will do what you say he will do. You need to learn to talk crazy talk. You may be broke today, but start saying, I'm going to pay my tithes, and God's going to open the windows of heaven in my life. I'm not going to be broke forever. Oh, I'm preaching my own self happy in here. God asked Ezekiel a question. He said, can these bones live? Now, all Ezekiel would have had to have said was, no, Lord, they can't. And it would have been over. God's asking you a question tonight. Can these bones live? Oh, they're dead now. It's dust in the valley now. It looks like there's no way out. That's the way it looks. But can you prophesy to something that's dead? Can you prophesy to something that's not alive anymore? Can you prophesy to something that's in a drought? Can you prophesy by faith over your situation? Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here right now. You can talk to your giants and watch God bring them down to size. You can call things that be not as though they were. I remember when I was in the darkest period of my life and God told me to prophesy, this is my year, my best days are still ahead. And I felt like a hypocrite. God, how can I say that? That's an absolute lie because I don't believe for a second that my best days are ahead. I'm in a dark time in my life and it doesn't look like it's working. In fact, it stinks. What do you mean, this is my year? It's the worst year I've ever had. I can't say that, God. I'd be lying if I said it. But God was teaching me something. He was teaching me about faith. He was teaching me about prophesying. God was showing me that when I speak faith out of my mouth, I don't have to feel faith at all. He was showing me that when I praise him, I don't have to feel it to praise him. He was showing me that death and life are in the power of the tongue. He was showing me that I eventually eat the fruit of what I'm prophesying. Because the tongue is like a rudder, and it'll guide your life. Your words will guide your life. And so when I say, if God be for me, who can be against me? All I'm really saying is, God, I'm believing in you. All I'm really saying is, Lord, my faith is in you. When I say, Lord, I've got faith in you, all I'm saying is, this is my year to be blessed. When I say, this is my year to get a house, I'm prophesying to my dead situation. I'm talking to somebody right now that faith is rising up in your soul. Turn to somebody and say, prophesy to your future. Jesus said, it's not what enters a man's mouth that defiles him, it's what comes out. I can predict your future by what you're saying right now. When you're going through hell and high water, you got to talk to your giants. When you're broke, you got to say, the money isn't here yet, but God is bringing it. So you can sit there and feel sorry for yourself, or you can tell your giants how big your God is. 
You can stare out the window and wish you had a better life, or you can prophesy to your future and tell your giants they're coming down. Touch five people and say, the giants are coming down. 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 Hallelujah. The giants are coming down. Hallelujah. I'm talking to somebody that needs to praise their God in the middle of their mess. Somebody needs to praise him in their midnight hour. God said, if you'll praise me, I'll fight the thing that's fighting you. God's going to turn everything around in your life. If you'll prophesy to your giant, you can watch every problem fall at your feet. If you'll prophesy to your giant, your best days are still ahead. If you'll prophesy to your giant, no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. If you'll prophesy to your giant, you can take a licking and keep on ticking. Take authority over your finances. Take authority over your children. Take authority over your marriage. Jesus spoke to sickness and it had to change. That's what God wants you to do. He wants you to speak to every giant in your life. Speak to every storm in your life. Everybody stand to your feet and shout glory. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, rabba ba 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 shanda la bossa. I want everybody to raise your hands to the Lord all over this room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to start off in a praise with your mouth open right now. Start off in a praise. Open your mouth and give him some praise right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I want you to talk to your giants all over this room. Speak to that giant in your life. Speak to that giant in your life. You come to me with a sword and a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Cancer, you're coming down. Sugar diabetes, you're coming down. Depression, you're coming down. Marriage problems, you're coming down. I talk to every mountain. I talk to every giant. And I tell you to move. I tell you to move. All over this house, speak to your giant. Speak to your mountain. Speak to your problem right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everybody raise your hands and say, Lord Jesus. Say it, say it after me. Say, Lord Jesus, my life is yours. I love you, and I need you in my life. I want a stronger relationship. From this minute forward, I will strive to walk with you every day, every hour, every minute of every day. It's my goal to be full of the Word of God, to be full of God's Spirit. It's my goal to be armed and dangerous, armed and dangerous. I speak to every giant, every mountain. I tell you to move in Jesus' name. Every giant, come down in Jesus' name. Discouragement. Get off of me. Get out of me. Lay hands on yourself right now. Speak to every problem in your body. Speak to every problem in your family. Speak to your own self. Tell the devil, get off of you. Tell the devil, get out of you. In the name of Jesus.